Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to WCS America Premier League. This is Group B. We are currently about to get into game number two here of Acer Scarlet versus State. And it uh, looks like the map is going to be Star Station. I am Sham2. Join with me is Axelov. I'm subbing in for Axel Toss for this week. Um, actually, no, tomorrow, I believe, we might have a guest caster. But we'll let that news come out later on tonight, I think. I don't know if there's any confirmations. I, I don't know the exact details yet. Possible. Who knows? Uh, looks like we actually... Okay. Something happened again in the lobby. Uh, lobby it, it, lobbies. Was, we're, it was incorrect map. The uh, second again. map is actually going to be Belshir Vestige. Oh, Belshir Vestige. Yes. Okay, so this is going to be the third lobby we've joined for this game. This is actually uh, a really great map for the style that Scarlet was using, I think, because there's so many angles where speedings can run across the map that, it, it, I mean, a Protoss can sit back and defend three bases, but if they do that, the Zerg can go up to four bases exactly like what we saw in Daybreak. Uh, it, it's, there's so many angles the speedings can come through. It's, it's very, very annoying, especially with, with someone who can run all over the map like, like Scarlet did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the things that I was pointing out right when we went to commercial break was that Scarlet's APM in that game was only 192 average, which, you know, typically for Zergs, we, we almost see a very higher APM than other, uh, other players. But Scarlet... Incre I would assume the ratio of effective APM to her APM was probably one-to-one. -one. Very efficient. She's one of the most efficient players uh, out there. In fact, if you watch her play, uh, most players do that thing where they, they give each command to unit like five times. Mm -hmm. uh, and she doesn't do that. She just gives a command, she goes, she macros, she spreads her creep. And that's why she has pretty much some of the best creep spread there is in the business uh, while even having the slightly lower APM than some of those uh, Korean Zerg counterparts. A very impressive uh, trait, you know. Uh, I mean, you have to you have to click five times. Isn't that how StarCraft is played? You have to make the <laughs> largest clatter you could possibly do. Otherwise, what's the point of playing StarCraft? It doesn't seem that impressive. But uh, let's get to the players and positions on the map. Spawning up here in the top left-hand corner from Team Acer, it is our blue Zerg player, Scarlet. And down here in the bottom right-hand corner, down a game, but can he come back? Our red Protoss player. State. Now, do you think we're going to be seeing a gateway expand coming out from State on this map? I mean, it's not uh, actually as the pro the pylon already went down. I just. I mean, it, it, it can actually still be a gateway expand. Some people do gateway expands and you put their initial buildings at the wall. Mm -hmm. It is less common because one of the advantages of that gateway expand is you don't lose any mining time early because your probes that go to mine, they build the, all the buildings right by the nexus and they go right back to mine. So you normally don't scout early. You don't lose any mining time at all with your early probes. Of course, if you're, if you're going to send that probe out yeah. uh, and you're already lo losing that mine time, you might as well just go to nexus first. Now comes in here, scouts off the spawning pool time. Completely acceptable spawning pool time, nothing too crazy, and so he's going to be perfectly fine with just going back home. Very long uh, rush distance map. Still going to throw down the forge first. That is actually a kind of interesting choice. I mean, uh, on this map, he could have gone the Nexus first. Mm -hmm. um, if she sent her Zergreens immediately to his base, maybe he would have had to, you know, do a little bit of a wall in or something. But uh, he could have easily defended that. The Forge first means, though, that he actually wants to invest some extra resources into denying her expansions, you know. So uh, he was already planning to put down the Pylon block, and ideally he'd actually like to double Pylon block. If you go Forge first, uh, you often want to use the double Pylon block to really slow the Zerg player down. Really get in their head here, and now here's that probe denying the third base as long as possible. Um, it looks like the Pylon at the natural has finished as well. There's one poor little Zerg over uh, drone just trying to gnaw away at it. And there goes the pylon block at the third base as well. So now Scarlet being denied both expansions. Of course, the great thing about this, even though the forge is so early, that allows him to react. So we can see where the Zergings go. If they go straight for his base, he can get the cannon really fast, get a wall. And if they go, uh, if they actually go for the pylons, then he can take his time and develop his tech. But seeing that the first two Zergings went straight to his base, of course, he's going to get this cannon and he might actually get a full wall up shortly. Oh, we could even see a potential cannon rush at a third, but I think you respect Scarlet's scouting ability too much to try that sneaky move. Yeah, that probe is being pretty sneaky, though. He's just kind of hanging out over here in the corner. Or it is, I guess? I don't know. I guess it's not... I guess it's, it's an it. It's, it's a, a robot. robot. Yeah, it's a robot. Is it a robot? I, I think it is. You don't know about Protoss, I race. <laughs> we need Clutch. We clutch. do need Clutch. <laughs> Clutch knows all the things in, in, in definitely high detail. Zergian's trying to be a little bit annoying. And they're being pretty successful, only taking out the shields, though, of that poor little probe. Probe confirms a third hatchery. 
So State knows Scarlet's not going for any, you know, crazy all in. Unless it's some, there's some weird trick all ins where Zerg takes a third and it just builds a billion slow Zerglings and just tries to overrun to Protoss with mass slow Zerglings and the element of surprise. Of course, uh, you know, State's probe ideally would see those units being rallied out and he would be able to react to that. Now, not seeing the double uh, gas that we saw from Scarlet last time, uh, you know, obviously this time she went for the quicker third base. And uh, what do you think we're going to be seeing for Tech Path then, if going for that third base so uh, so early? Uh, roaches are, are pretty common with that faster third base, of course, because you're getting the layer a little bit slower. You have to defend three angles. We saw last game, you know, she wasn't confident in taking that third against the early Zealot Force, so she just took it later. But already having a third up means she needs a way to deal with any potential early gateway pressure. Uh, so roaches are kind of mandatory unless she sees State do something crazy like to take a really fast third of his own. Roaches, one of the most annoying units, um, and in next patch could possibly even be more annoying with the burrow uh, cost being reduced to 50-50. Roaches, of course, getting increased regeneration when they are burrowed, and I'm going to actually be really excited to see what type of uh, burrow play comes out after next patch. Oh, State's going for a Stargate, and the Zergians are going to spot it. That's a great win for Scarlet, of course. This isn't a crazy mass Stargate all-in build, like some double proxy Stargate, but just knowing a single target is there means they probably won't really get too much damage done. Of course, with Phoenixes, you can almost always accomplish something, even if it's just cleaning up overlords around the map and picking off a drone here and there. Right, denying that map control, denying any type of vision. Uh, finally cleans up those two Zerglings. Those two Zerglings stayed alive for, I think, a minute and a half inside the base. Scarlet, once again, being incredibly efficient with her APM. And we can see, I mean, it's, it's still pretty, pretty... Well, actually, as soon as I said that, it scooted up to 300. But, you know, right when the, those Zerglings were running around, it was around 190 still, just uh, being incredibly efficient. Scarlet is, is definitely known for her mechanics and being able to control units very well while also not missing a beat with that macro. Uh, many drones in production. One stalker is going to try to poke around and be annoying and then realize it's on creep and it has no friends out there. So <laughs> scuttle back saying, okay, I poked the hornet's nest. Let's get out here before too many of those little Zerglings come out after me. Scarlet just barely starting speedling now. Got double evolution chamber on the way, as well as Lair starting to grab gases at the other bases. Third base now has double gas. Natural still doesn't have gas yet. Starting to pop out those phoenixes. Starting to do a little bit of damage to that poor little overlord. He wasn't hurting anybody. Well, he's hurting now. <laughs> yeah, he's oh he is hurting. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> bursting into a little pile of goo there. Of course, State uh, is not hiding Phoenixes and waiting until he gets four or five and trying to catch Scarlet by surprise. Mm -hmm. Maybe get a couple queen kills like he did on Daybreak. And the reason is because, you know, the Zergian spotted the Stargate at the start, so uh, he anticipated Scarlet would be ready with Spore Crawlers right next to those queens to make sure the uh, Phoenixes can't pick them off. A lot of Zergling moving around the map. Just trying to scout out, see what's going on. She's actually going straight for the Hydrogen. I don't think she's... Uh, uh, gotten any roaches quite yet. So uh, Hydras are a great way to defend against gateway Stargate uh, aggression, especially on a map like Belshir Vestige, where you can create all these concaves on top of the ramps and really use the terrain to your advantage. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of uh, Hydra use ever since the speed uh, speed upgrade that has been available in Heart of the Swarm. And Hydras, I've, I feel, are one of the best units uh, for Zerg in the, Z the ZVP matchup nowadays. So strong, incredibly strong DPS. They, they really are. You know, uh, the two main counters to Hydras, of course, are Templar and Colossi. And in Heart of the Swarm now, you have Vipers, which are a very <laughs> strong response to Colossi to take them out much faster than Corruptors would have for a cheaper price. And then against Templar, the Hydra's speed, of course, helps them uh, being able to dodge those Swarm just a little bit better than they were able to previously. So Hydra's more common in Heart of the Swarm due to those two uh, advances, the Hydra speed and, of course, the Vipers use of Abduct and Blinding Clouds. Now, did he scout off the... No, he did not. State did not scout off the, uh, the Hydrogen, but is going for the Colossus as well as Thermal Lance. As we were saying before, Colossus incredibly effective against those Hydras. So uh, this is actually a really nice move for him. I mean, obviously Protoss love to get those Colossus. It's incredibly strong units. But uh, getting those Colossus this, qu uh, this quickly, not going for Templar, going to be a good move for him. Going to help him out a lot until those Corruptors possibly start po uh, pouring out. It definitely is. State's going for a two-base time, and he really wants to get rid of Scarlet right now. Cut his probes at 44 a couple minutes ago. Built up to, you know, built up all his warp gates, and now he's moving out. Militia, of course, sentries, warp prism, 
Colossus, Immortal, all the forces he needs to deal with Scarlet's army. And you know, Scarlet, she doesn't have any roaches to help tank. So she's going to have to rely on a really great concave to let those Hydras get both the spread they need to not instantly die to Colossi, as well as being able to engage the Protoss army and not be segmented off too easily by force fields. Now moving on to the creep, and this is when the Protoss has to be incredibly careful. The creep helps those Hydras move incredibly quickly. 15 Hydras on the way, as well as the 23 Zergling that were out here before. So 50 Zergling as well as, oh man, so many Hydras are going to be out here. As soon as she gets a great surround and concave, this uh, army is going to completely melt. But it's getting that concave is going to be the incredible difficult, uh, difficult part. A lot of beautiful force fields sectioning off the Hydras, actually not allowing them to get into a good concave here. War Prism has deployed, warping in more units. Hydra, uh, Zergling do run in here, trying to get a surround. Hydra's pushing out the army. Ah, oh, there's no force fields left, and on creep, the Zerg just is overrunning state. He really needed a few more force fields to keep the Zerg forces at bay, because right now, he's pretty much out of units. And when you That's do a two GG. base all in... Wow, very, very quick game there. That was... Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> that was Scarlet we just watched there. You know, uh, it's not too often you see a Protoss do a Colossae all in, and a Zerg makes pretty much nothing but Hydras, mm -hmm. and just absolutely stomps it without a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost counterintuitive to see, you know, Colossus get completely uh, destroyed like that, but, you know, even with those beautiful force fields, still was just not able to just zone out as many of the Hydras as he'd like to. As soon as the Zergling ran in, the Colossus were starting to shoot downward instead of at the Hydras. The Hydras just had free reign just to shoot at everything else. And we can see right here, that's when the Colossus are focusing on the Zergling, trying to take out everything. The Stalkers just, you know, were just pretty much not doing that much because they're not armored units and there's everything just melting away. You know, what's really key there is, is if you're going to use Hydras against Protoss and you want it to work, you have to do exactly what Scarlet did. Set up that huge concave so your opponent can't cut your force in half with force fields. We noticed there, there was actually no possible way for a state to cut her army in half. Mm -hmm. And so the force fields just kept her back. And she's like, okay, that's fine. I'll just sit back. I've got three bases. I, I can just let my hatchery take a little bit of a beating. Then when the force fields go away, I'm just going to overrun you. Uh, it's all about the concave. Scarlet manipulated the position perfectly. Takes down uh, that game as well, so she's going to win 2-0. Two 2-0. Zero. Two to zero. So we're going to get into our next match here. It's going to be Oz versus Violet. Stay tuned. This is WCS America Premier League. We'll be right back. We'll